Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. You know, a principled person um, that uh, claims to have value and class, you know, shows not when uh, things are good for him, but things are not going that well. That is, let's say you have a, uh, you play a, uh, a game, let's say soccer or football, or you play Monopoly with your friends. You know there are certain rules, set rules that we all have to follow when we play a game. Uh, we agreed on the rules of the game and we play it. Uh, well, when you lose, that's when you have to show grace. If you are of a certain kind of a level, if you don't show grace, you definitely are not a gracious person. Uh, and that shows some part of your character that is not really likable. The same thing when you play uh, football, there are certain rules. <clears throat> when you lose, well, I lost. Let me congratulate you. You are better today than I was. Very good. But I will train hard. And next time when we play, following the same rules, I will try to win as you will try. See you next time. That's a graceful way of losing. Now, uh, we have a little problem here. When we win, we're very graceful. Hey, yes, yes, thank you very much. I like to thank God. I like to thank this. I like to thank that. Okay, well, we all are graceful when we win, but that's, that's not when you're supposed to be uh, or when it shows who you really are. Under pressure shows who you really are. Uh, that's why unchecked people with power, they're not changing. They're just showing who they really are because there's no reason to fake it anymore or to follow rules. So then uh, you see what kind of individuals. Now, they are. What's the problem here? <laughs> we have an article here from uh, um, Russia Today telling us that Iraq, you know, that country that liberated the United States of America and NATO and the free world, the good, the good world, the good countries, the good people, were the ones that they brought uh, freedom and democracy. Well, they're gonna do trade uh, with uh, China in uh, yuan, not in the U.S. dollar. <clears throat> I wonder what kind of trade is between Iraq and China. Can you guess? I give you three options: oil is the first one, second oil, and the third one is oil. So, which one you pick? All right. So that means China will probably buy uh, oil from Iraq paying in yuan, not in the US dollar. In the meantime, the United States is very concerned with equity, inclusion and diversity, and making sure that appoints people whenever it can, um, based on um, quality. So, um, what do we have here? Let's read this little article. Russia Today, 25th of February, 2023. Iraq opts for yuan settlements in trade with China. The country is looking to cut back on dollar dependence, Reuters reports. So, uh, yeah, uh, good news for the uh, free world, right? Iraq's central bank announced this week that the country's trade with China may soon be settled directly in Yuan, according to Reuters. The report says the move is an attempt to improve access to foreign currency. Why? Why not dollar? <laughs> the regulator has been taking urgent steps to compensate for a dollar shortage in local markets, which prompted the cabinet to approve a currency revaluation earlier this month, the news agency said, and I'm quoting, it is for the first time that imports would be financed from China in Yuan. As Iraq imports from China have been financed in US dollars only, the government's economic advisor, Mudir Salih, told Reuters. Now, uh, this is the China's imports, all right, from China. So the Iraqi imports from China. I don't know if uh, yet if it's going to go the other way, but I'm assuming it should because uh, believe me, uh, Chinese uh, <clears throat> need some oil. As part of the plan, the regulator may boost the balances of Iraqi banks that have accounts with Chinese banks in Yuan. Another option would be to boost local banks' balances via the central bank's accounts with JP Morgan and Development Bank of Singapore. The regular, regulator added, 
The first option would reportedly depend on the central bank's yuan reserves, while the other would use the bank's US dollar reserves as JP Morgan and DBS. The two banks would co convert, convert the dollar to yuan and pay the financial beneficiaries in China, Salih explained. The move is the largest sign of the yuan growing, grow, yuan's growing role on the international stage, according to Reuters. As part of its de-dollarization strategy, Beijing has been promoting settlements and national currencies other than the US dollar and the euro. China has been gradually opening its financial markets as more countries look to diversify their currency exposures. So um, yeah, that step by step, the dollar will uh, uh, be replaced with other options. And uh, believe me, China will little by little get to uh, Iraqi's oil in, uh, in Yuan. I don't know if they're, they're doing it already. China, uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping visited Saudi Arabia about two months ago, I think. And so Mohammed bin Salman and they uh, signed some little uh, <coughs> agreements about $16 billion or $14 billion. Doesn't really matter at that point uh, in agreements. And they again, they agreed to trade in uh, their currencies, not in the US dollar. Now, that's another sign that uh, even Saudi Arabia uh, um, accepts or agrees with China's uh, growing influence, a uh, global influence, which is not very well, uh, uh, it's not accepted by the big boss. Now, why did I start at the beginning of this video with, uh, you know, respecting the rules? Respecting the rules is, um, I want to put in the context of uh, nowadays uh, economic competition. Um, global competition, you know, is based on rules. I mean, we compete, but there are certain things that countries, you know, can't really do. I mean, I can't, uh, you know, United States wants to uh, get a good deal from, let's say, China. It's going to say, I'm going to give me the good deal. I mean, you know, there are certain rules, but it seems like uh, those rules are not implemented um, until I start losing. When I start losing, I start uh, trying to change the rules. And uh, I read an article a minute ago uh, regarding the United States putting sanctions on uh, some uh, Chinese companies. Well, put sanctions, why? Because you can't compete. You put ch sanctions because why? Because they trade with Russia. Again, um, when you do intervene in, in this matter, uh, you just alter the, uh, the rules. And altering the rules, believe me, you alter them uh, so you can benefit out of that, not the other country. So um, China is advancing. I don't know how much advancing economically and in, you know, on a planetary uh, stage uh, or level. And I don't think uh, you have to stay look at it with uh, satisfaction. On the other hand, what can um, um, U.S. do? Well, U.S. usually in the last, I don't know, 30 years uh, dropped its ability to negotiate or to make deals. And it uses only four tools. That's all it has now for, uh, you know, a diplomacy. And it, the one is threats, making threats to our countries or entities. They don't have to negotiate. Second one, blackmail. Third one, a little regime change. And the fourth one is bombardment invasion for whatever reason they uh, come up with. I don't know. You violate some rights of a, I don't know, some birds or whatever. So you, he's gonna, they have to intervene. Why? Because they're moral superiority and they're good countries and you're not, obviously. They determined. And since you're perfect, you can afford doing that. I mean, this is uh, <clears throat> uh, paranoia and uh, narcissism on steroids. But that's the way uh, the world uh, works. Unfortunately for the, these guys uh, who like diversity, they don't like diversity on a global stage when they're challenged economically. That, that, that's unacceptable. Um, I make the rules <clears throat> that you guys have to follow. And when you are challenging those rules, I have to punish you like a parent with the children or I don't know, like a teacher with the students. That's uh, the role the United States uh, assigned to itself based on, uh, they say, uh, moral virtue. 
but we know that's based on this. And don't get me wrong, uh, if there would be not United States, we would be another country. Because I don't, uh, I don't think that another country necessarily would be, okay, you know what, I'm okay with that if you just uh, um, surpass me or beat me at this game right now. I graciously accept defeat and I will get stronger and I will challenge you again. <laughs> the other country might take care of you, you will never be able to show up to compete again. If you know what I mean. If I put enough resistance in our game now and you can make sure that uh, I will not be able to train so I can challenge you again, they will do it. So uh, again, um, for those countries uh, who uh, or that never had a big power, uh, it's easier, it's easy to say, well, no, if, if it was, if it were us, we would be different. <clears throat> I don't know. You don't know until you're over there. You can say you're, I don't know, Jesus Christ until you're in a situation to be, uh, you know, uh, whipped a little bit and um, kicked in the balls and then crucified. And then we'll see how you react. Until then, we're all um, <clears throat> virtuous and fantastic. Uh, that reminds me of, uh, I don't use this person uh, <clears throat> as a reference, but sometimes it works in my interest and now I use it. <laughs> It's, um, um, well, why not? I mean, I think I 100% agree with these statements coming from, uh, let me get it politically correct. Um, Re doc, uh, Rev doc, I don't know which one comes uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Did I miss anything? I don't want to miss any titles over there so I'm, I can be, uh, you know. So he said that, uh, t talking to to the black community, African-American community, however you want to call it, saying that don't judge these guys, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm paraphrasing, uh, the white people, white folk, uh, don't judge them too uh, roughly because you don't know how you would react if you were in their shoes. Like, uh, you know, when you have power, maybe you would have done things worse. I can't remember, I read this, I don't know, like 20 some years ago or more than that. Um, anyway, so uh, this is it. The countries that are saying, well, if uh, we never did anything, maybe you couldn't because you're weak. When you're stronger then and unchecked, then we'll see how you react. But we'll see, right? Remember, when you get, whenever you get on top, everyone wants to, everybody wants to get over there. So all of a sudden, they all want to target you. But you, when you're down, not many target you. The ones below you target you, but the goal is right there. So when you get over there, everybody's going to target you. So maybe we should not, uh, and I'm not uh, trying to defend the United States of America, it defends itself if necessary, um, maybe we should uh, sometimes um, judge their uh, aggressive, um, I would say, bullying position on this planet a little bit, you know, mild, you know, with a more understanding, not because what they do is, uh, is good or something. Yeah, there's good things and bad things that all countries do. But uh, it has the power and it's hard sometimes to handle uh, power in, in an objective way and some people argue why would it be beneficial anyway to handle it with grace and uh, with balance. No, I'm in charge and I want to make sure that everybody does whatever I want them to do. Well, that's a tyrannical way. Well, that's the way it is. Go back uh, and have a seat now. Uh, because believe me, if you get in my position, now you say, oh, you're like that. But when you're going to be in my position, maybe you're going to be uh, not talking with every, anybody because there's not going to be anybody around to talk to because you would make sure they are not available. They will be cutting uh, sugar cane in the plantation, if you know what I mean. So, so maybe a little bit more balance in uh, you know, pointing out the United States is the, this country and that country. And there's no pure country. If there's a pure, pure country, uh, that country uh, had no power ever. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.